opposing demonstrations in the streets of central Minsk. With this man at the heart of both, embattled Belarusian president Alexander Lukashenko. Dear friends, I didn't just call you here to defend me. You came here to defend your country, your independence, your families, for the first time in a quarter of a century. Lukashenko addressed thousands of loyal supporters on Sunday after days of protest put Belarusian domestic politics in the international spotlight. He accused foreign powers of organizing the opposition against him. The opposition is all paid off. They're provocateurs who went into the crowd. Where are the parents of the children who went to the protest? It's criminals who are committing these violent acts against our riot police. Lukashenko has ruled the former Soviet state since 1994. And after his disputed re-election victory last week, he is determined to stay in power. Moscow says it's ready to help militarily after Lukashenko reached out to Russian President Vladimir Putin twice in recent days. But just two and a half kilometers away from the main government building in Minsk, an entirely different sentiment, as a much larger crowd of tens of thousands poured into a rally at Victory Park for what organizers called a march for freedom. We want changes, and not just in the political sense. We want human life to be valued in our country. That's the main demand. The current authorities are in no way supporting this. They're only making it worse. They say for all of this to happen, Lukashenko has to go. They reject official results that say the president won his sixth term with 80 percent of the vote and are demanding a new election and a new beginning for the people of Belarus. Let's get more on these developments. We are joined by DW's Yuri Rochetto, who is standing by. So, Yuri, tell us more about the accusations that President Lukashenko has made against NATO. Well, Lukashenko is clearly using the pretext of an external threat to distract from the real problem, Saref, which is uh, that he obviously has very little support in his own country right now. Uh, Lukashenko has disparagingly called the demonstrators sheep being controlled from abroad. And this isn't the first time Lukashenko has talked about a threat from abroad. Um, in the election campaign, uh, he even portrayed Russia as a threat. But now that he is looking to close ranks with President Vladimir Putin, uh, the subject of the so-called Russian threat is suddenly off the table. And now he is saying uh, that NATO is the real threat. Um, from today, the Belarusian army will be holding military exercises on the border with Lithuania. But that ste step uh, and Lukashenko's talk about the NATO threat seem to me to be purely a propaganda measure, nothing more. Let's talk a little bit more about uh, those relations with Russia and the role of Russia in all of this, because we know Lukashenko spoke with Russian President Vladimir Putin on Saturday, again yesterday, on Sunday. What can we expect from Russia in this situation? Well, I don't think uh, this is only about military support, uh, and I don't think Vladimir Putin will really be sending his armed forces to Belarus, although Belarus has remained a close ally of Russia's. Firstly, Lukashenko doesn't need more troops. He seems to be or to have enough security forces of his own uh, to crack down <clears throat> on the demonstrators. We saw that last week. And secondly, Putin seems to be very reluctant in his response to what has been happening in Belarus in recent days. Uh, we haven't heard a single public comment from him. But military support is not everything. Uh, Belarus and Russia are already very close, but it is possible that Putin wants to further deepen economic cooperation with Belarus and that he's uh, pushing for that. And it's also possible that Lukashenko has been discussing a plan to escape to Russia with Vladimir Putin. After all, the pressure on him is clearly rising. Talk, talk with us a little bit more about that pressure. How big is the threat of these protests to Lukashenko right now? Well, pretty big. It's quite clear that the opposition will not give up, and it's clear that there will be more protests on the streets of many Belarusian cities, especially after yesterday protests. And uh, the opposition doesn't want violence, but rather dialogue. Um, they are even prepared for dialogue with Lukashenko. If he's smart, and if he doesn't want to end like other autocrats or dictators before him, he will agree uh, to dialogue uh, with the opposition and maybe even lead it. Maybe we could see a roundtable with 
repre representatives from different groups of society. And even though Lukashenko said yesterday that a new election would lead to the downfall of the country, nevertheless, a new election is becoming more and more likely. But that very much depends on how many people protest in cities across Belarus in the coming days. DW's Yuri Shedo reporting from Moscow on the situation in Belarus and the international fallout. Thank you, Yuri.